Attention bodybuilders, I'm going to give you the three most important considerations when it comes to your protein intake with the goal of body fat reduction. Plus, if you stay around to the end of the video, I'm going to break down how many grams of protein you should be aiming for per kilo of body weight. Let's get into it. First up, a high protein diet is going to spike muscle protein synthesis. That is the process of repairing and developing new muscle tissue. Now, this is all related to the cellular pathway known as mTOR. Very simply, let's think of it like an anabolic switch. And when it's turned on, we see a big increase in muscle protein synthesis. We want to ensure that the protein that we take has a complete amino acid profile. We want all the essential amino acids. In particular, we want the amino acid leucine. Leucine has been shown to increase or activate mTOR, sorry. Uh, it's kind of like a switch, it turns it on, and then that has the effect of increasing muscle protein synthesis. The goal when you're dropping body fat, at the very least, should be to maintain and preserve the amount of lean muscle mass that you have. Maybe a bit of a better outcome is you're going to increase your lean muscle mass while you're dropping body fat. And that is particularly true for someone who has a decent amount of body fat that they want to drop. Maybe a new trainer in the gym that is starting their journey. Uh, maybe someone who has not been training at their their capacity, their potential, and they step things up in the gym and they increase their training intensity. Given those scenarios, it is perf perfectly reasonable to expect that you're going to increase your lean muscle mass whilst at the same time dropping body fat. So a high protein diet is going to be very, very important for helping you to preserve that lean tissue. Now, remember the muscle full effect. So that is the maximum amount of protein that you should take in one meal. Otherwise, we start to hit a ceiling, and the ceiling is known as the muscle full effect, where you can continue to take protein in for that meal, but you won't see muscle protein synthesis continue to increase. Now, it's thought that that's around 30 to maybe 45 grams of protein per meal. It does depend in part on how much lean tissue you have, but eating above and beyond that in terms of your protein intake for that meal, it's not going to continue to spike muscle protein synthesis further. So the first big consideration when it comes to a high protein diet while you're dropping body fat is the impact it has on muscle protein synthesis. Number two, a high protein diet makes you feel very, very satisfied. A high protein diet will trigger a number of different satiating hormones, including CCK and GLP-1. And this makes you feel full, makes you feel more satisfied from the foods that you're eating. At the same time, it has a tendency to lower the hunger hormone, ghrelin, which is released from the stomach. So when you have a high protein diet, you tend to feel more satisfied from the foods that you're eating. And so if calories are down, that can be very, very helpful because who enjoys being starving when they're running lower calories? It's not a very nice feeling. Just on a bit of a side note, if you have a high protein, high fiber diet, both protein and fiber are fantastic for making you feel very, very satisfied from the foods that you're eating. And so if you're running a high protein, high fiber diet, you find that your hunger signals come down by a significant margin. But that is one of the beauties of running a higher protein diet. When you're trying to drop body fat, you feel a lot more satisfied from the foods that you're eating and it helps you to manage a lower calorie intake. Next up, number three, we have the thermal effect of food. This is the amount of energy required to digest, absorb, and metabolize the nutrients from the foods that you eat. Now, the three macronutrients have a different thermal effect of food each. Fats, only 1% to 2% of the energy in fats is required for the process of absorbing, digesting, and utilizing the energy from the fats and the nutrients in the fats. So uh, it's very, very low in the thermal effect of food. If we look at carbohydrates, it's between 5 to 10% of the energy in carbohydrates are uh, utilized for the same process. Proteins, on the other hand, 20 to 30% of the energy in proteins is required for that process of digestion and the absorption of the nutrients. And so that means that when you have a higher protein diet, you are going to use more energy and that energy is going to be directed towards the process of digestion, which can be very, very helpful when you are running lower calories and you have a higher protein target because it means you're going to use a lot of the energy or relative to, say, carbohydrates and fats 
for the process of digestion as we've described. So that is very, very, very helpful. And it's another reason why running a high protein diet when you're trying to drop body fat, especially in bodybuilding, is absolutely critical. So how much protein should you consume per kilo of body weight per day if the goal is to, at the very least, preserve lean muscle mass while you're dropping body fat, but a better scenario would be to increase lean muscle mass. Well, we can't follow a lot of national RDIs, so recommended dietary intakes. We shouldn't be looking to those if we're going to try to maximize the amount of lean muscle mass we have. That is because the RDIs are set very, very low. They use nitrogen balance as a measure of the RDI, and nitrogen balance basically is this. In the amino acids from the foods that we eat, from the proteins that we eat, nitrogen is released and they measure the amount of nitrogen coming in the body versus the amount of nitrogen leaving the body, and that gives you the nitrogen balance, and that's where the RDI is set. However, we want to be in a positive nitrogen balance because we want to continue to develop lean muscle mass. So for your average gym rat in the gym, let's say if you're starting out as a beginner um, and you're going to someone who's maybe an intermediate trainer, anywhere from about 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilo of body weight per day, that's a good mark to start off from. However, there has been a couple of studies that have shown for a very experienced trainer, someone who has a lot of lean tissue, someone who is trying to get very, very lean, so we think a bodybuilder in the middle of a contest prep, it could be up to about three or 3.1 grams of protein per kilo of body weight. And that is the optimum level to try to, at the very least, preserve lean tissue while you're dieting down. But again, the idea that you could potentially increase your lean muscle mass when you're dieting, that is still certainly on the cards, especially if you have a lot of body fat that you're trying to drop. If you're a, a new trainer who's really trying to uh, increase their lean muscle mass as much as possible whilst dropping body fat, maybe someone who's stepping things up in the gym, they're taking things to the very next level and they really want to pick up their training intensity, or even a competitive bodybuilder who is using PEDs, they certainly have an increased ability to uh, utilize the proteins and, and maximize muscle protein synthesis. So there you go. There's the big three reasons why you want to ensure you have a high protein intake. If your goal is to drop body fat while increasing lean muscle mass, protein is going to spike muscle protein synthesis. It's going to make you feel very satisfied from the foods that you're eating. And also it has a high thermal effect of food. Alrighty. If you're liking these videos, please leave the thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon.